So I've seen this question quite a bit over the years. You've just got your brand new tarot deck and you've freed it from the suffocating cellophane that it's been wrapped in and you've let it out of its box for its very first play. But you notice they're quite big and you're not quite sure how you should be handling these and how you should be shuffling them without things falling over the desk all over the place. And you've read that cards falling out can mean things. So just to help you out, I thought I'd make a little video looking at shuffling technique, but also discussing the superstitions and the rituals around shuffling a tarot deck or oracle deck and how to handle it. Uh, so make yourself a cup of tea. If this is the first time to my channel, please subscribe, please like the video and please comment away. Uh, if not, stay tuned for, for how to shuffle tarot cards. So one of the things that I should have mentioned in my last video on how to choose a tarot deck, and I completely forgot, was that tarot cards do come in different sizes. So you can get the slightly larger standard size that is kind of like a two to one ratio um, that most cards come in. You can get the oversized versions that the Thoth deck famously comes in that you saw last time, it's slightly bigger than the hand. Or you can get, in some limited styles, you can get a smaller pocket size, playing card size deck. This is completely fine. So if you have small hands or you don't want to deal with cards falling out over the desk, or over the floor at all, and you just want less stress, don't do it. Buy a small deck. Completely fine. Enjoy shuffling enjoy using your cards if however you've got a larger deck or you the style of deck only comes in a larger size don't panic pick it up uh, i will show you a couple of techniques and tricks to, to help you with your shuffling and maybe break a few rules uh, you don't need to become a croupy aerial to shuffle them and you will pick it up over time so the first question and it might seem a quite a ludicrous one that i wanted to ask was why are we shuffling the tarot deck at all? It might seem strange to ask this because of course we shuffle a tarot deck, um, but asking this question will kind of help us know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and also improve that, that, that technique. So the first things first, one of the reasons why we do shuffle a tarot deck is the most obvious, we're introducing a random element we're introducing that primordial chaos, that interesting quagmire of um, unpredictability that's present in quite a lot of the divination systems. So for example, geomancy um, starts with dots in sand that in an uncontrolled way, and those dots become glyphs that you read in a special way. Tea leaf reading, you are pouring tea out of a cup and seeing where tea leaves stick on the side and seeing the, the random shapes, symbols and glyphs that they fall in in order to give meaning to the querent and the question. In runes, you are casting runes over a table, seeing which lands face up, where they land and in what position they land to give meaning to to your answer to the question. So all of these systems have this element of uh, random chaos uh, in, in, in casting or setting up the answer. The other thing, quite interesting thing, is that you are removing your control. You are taking away your control in laying out the cards in a specific order or uh, having the cards coming out in a sequence. So you're taking away that control. The interesting point about this is that you kind of don't. You exert your control over the cards. So by shuffling them in the particular way that you're shuffling them, you're showing your control over the position of the cards, but yet you're removing control because you don't have an ability to, to order those cards the way you want it. So you're exerting control by removing control. Um, that's probably one best left for the philosophers, but I think it's a kind of an interesting dichotomy. The other thing that we're doing when we are shuffling a tarot deck is that we are connecting. This question of connection comes in several different layers uh, and it's quite a big thing. Uh, so first of all, we are connecting to the cards. 
by connecting to the cards these are moving from printed pictures on a piece of card into being a tool for for divination and a tool for being an oracle so we are connecting to them as an important non-mundane thing we are changing the mundane to a special magical act another thing that we're doing is we're connecting to the question that's being asked so usually when we are doing any type of divination we are asking a question and looking for an answer um, time connecting to the question whilst we're shuffling allows us to consider the question um, to in a more mystical way put the question into the cards but in a kind of more psychological way consider the question as the background context of what the answer that we're going to get um, so setting that mindset and ask seeing how it's been asked and, and the importance of how it's been asked another thing is we're connecting with the querent so querent is an old term for client querent being the person that's asking a question uh, question querent so when we're connecting with the querent we can see it as a mystical act we are connecting with their energy we are connecting psychically with the other person and just like with the question we're seeing them as the background context of where that question's come from but also um, where that answer is going to lay in, in junction do they feel um, energetically nervous do they feel very calm are they a confident person are they not and that's where it's kind of on the mundane level we're connecting with the querent in ways that is a uh, a psychological thing we're we're feeling what that person is like to sit with we're feeling of what it's like in that room whether there is tension or not and finally we're connecting with the moment the the, the time that we're actually in so we are seeing that moment that room that consultation as as, as, as a magical or ritual act um, and we're connecting to it in a way that is is special or sacred um, so mindfully shuffling and thinking about the question and being with the person uh, allows us to consider anything that may happen as a signal or a sign or a symbol of what we're reading so that could be that the uh, querent coughs at a specific moment or shuffles around or a siren happens from outside or the car the querent puts the cards on the table rather than handing them over to you or indeed like we're going to talk about later cards fall out of the deck um, so that connecting with the moment that that mindfulness is changing the the space and the time that we're setting aside for this reading as a magical and ritual act of importance rather than one that is just mundane like we're doing typing a letter or, or doing some office work so those are the kind of two main things we are connecting and we are introducing a randomization element into the cards easy so how do we shuffle a large deck well if they were playing cards we would shuffle them in two ways playing cards are quite small as everyone should know these are three and a half by two and a quarter inches um, they are normally designed to be quite small and easy to handle so you will tend to have the overhanded shuffle which most people shuffle or the kind of croupier style ruffle shuffle yeah like so uh, which works for, for these cards absolutely fine. Um, some will shuffle in different techniques, they might do some fun cuts, um, but it's pretty easy. With the tarot we have to look at a different technique because they're slightly bigger. Um, so we're now looking at in inches, four and a half, four and three quarters rather, by about two and three quarters, which as you can see is quite a bit of a size up these for my hands are okay uh, I used to have problems when I was younger um, but now now I am a fully grown adult they're, they're relatively easy for me to handle so I overhand shuffle them slower than I would do a normal size deck but pretty easily if you have smaller hands or you're not used to shuffling these turn them side on 
uh, if you shuffle them lengthways, yes, you will need to be careful of not knocking them out, but that is a completely and easily valid way of shuffling this deck um, and still looking quite professional at doing it. On the overhanded size deck, we are going up in size again. So this is five and a half by three and a half, uh, three uh, inches and three quarters. So these I struggle with. This is, oh, you can see I'm kind of white knuckling it. Um, so I can still just shuffle these. It's not very comfortable. So I would normally turn these side on and shuffle them this way. Um, to make it easier and it's the same again with the Terra Noir which is ever so and you can't quite see it there but it's ever so slightly bigger than, than this deck um, and I shuffle these side on again yeah um, so that's absolutely fine the the only other way that you can shuffle that you might get a few grins and might get a few laughs um, but you can just do the old-fashioned five-year-old style put them on the desk and give them a good shuffle if it is a new deck you're probably best off doing this a couple of times because it does really mix the cards up pretty well um, you may get a few grins that might be what you want in a session for example someone's really nervous and scared and you just want to kind of cheer them up and give them a bit of, of light-heartedness so it might be quite fun to do that um, and there might be reasons why you just decide to do that instead of shuffling overhand or something. Um, so that's absolutely fine and valid. The only other thing about shuffling is uh, shuffling will need to change whether you are reading uh, reversals or not. A reversal is when a card will be upside down. Some people will read this in a different way than they would do if it was upright. But to read reversals, you will need to put this upside down random element into the card deck that you're shuffling. So to do that, you need to invert some of the cards as you're shuffling. All you need to do is every now and again, take part and turn it upside down. This is pretty easy to do. You might do a kind of a turn over the middle thing, but you just need to every now and again, just turn over some of the cards. Yep. Um, if a client is doing that, if you have got a querent or a client that is shuffling the deck and thinking about their question, you can tell them to shuffle it as you would. If they're struggling, you can tell them to turn it side on. But if you read reversals, you will need to tell them to turn some upside down. So you can do it this way and show them how to do it that way. Or you can have them, which sometimes is easier, just split the deck on the table, turn the middle upside down, and then restack them. That might be easier. Um, it is a little bit easier to describe. Just split the deck into three piles. I'm going to turn the middle over. Um, and then you just put them back together and carry on shuffling. Um, they will be, if you are talking to a client, you're asking them to carry on shuffling until they feel like it is done, it is ready, it is fully baked, that the timer has dinged. Um, sometimes this may feel like it's an intuitive gut feeling that it's, it's, it's now ready to read. Or some people describe feeling the cards kind of lock in or click. Um, into place and that's absolutely fine too so just keep shuffling until that the other thing that you will have is uh, cards will occasionally fall out no matter how good a shuffler you are sometimes a card will fall onto the table when we were talking about it being a mystical and sacred ritual space to to read tarot this becomes an important symbol uh, so most people will see those dropped cards as a special card. Whether that is that they are jumping out of the deck because it's not included in the question, but they're very important cards, or whether the meaning of those cards become 
that they are something that the, the person that's shuffling is ignoring and needs awareness of, or whether it is that they are important cards to the question that's being asked, but don't aren't covered by the question's context. Um, it will you'll read that when you're reading those cards and see what they mean but they are generally ascribed as a special meaning so what you do is you put those cards on to one side and you read them either before the reading or after i tend to read them after so that we've read the question we've seen the answer and then we return to the cards that have fallen out and then we can either see whether they are relevant for that answer or whether they are something that the the um the person that's shuffling or the person that's questioning is avoiding or not consciously aware of. So bearing that in mind, put them aside and, and see. There are cases when you are reading for people that are not physically there. They might be on the phone, they might be over Skype, or they might even be over an email system. This is becoming really common now that we are in pandemic lockdown number 58. Uh, I'm recording this in January 2021. So that is becoming quite a common thing. Getting your client to shuffle a deck when they are not there is impossible. So what do you do in those circumstances? Well, there's a couple of ways. You can, uh, let me just switch back to here you can tell them to tell you to stop when they are ready to as you are shuffling stop then you read your cards alternatively and if you've got a little bit more time you can tell them to tell you to stop and that's your first card then carry on shuffling and tell them to tell you to stop and that's your second card and carry on for, for however many cards or whatever spread you've got, whether you're doing a cross. Um, the other way is to ruffle the deck and ask them to stop when they're ready. That's a bit stage magician, but it's completely fine. It doesn't work very well on these cards because these are quite hard, thick uh, card stock, but might work well on a in a card system like this. Um, so that's absolutely fine too. The other thing is that you don't actually have to get them to shuffle at all. You can just shuffle them and, and figure out when it's, it's right to stop listening to them, explain the question or the context around the question and kind of connecting to them. And then you just know when to stop. That's completely good too. And will still give you a valid reason uh, reading that's not necessary to kind of get the other person to do cuts um, so if the person is not there you can introduce a randomized ele uh, ram randomized element if I can say that correctly uh, from the person that you're reading by those methods if not don't worry about it it's, it's not a big problem tarot card readers will build up their own little foibles <laughs> I am no exception. I have weird quirks when I am shuffling a deck or handling a deck. Um, I am going to show you these now. This is because I am a slightly superstitious reader and I am slightly on the mystical spectrum rather than the mundane and the psychological side. Um, one thing that I do do is I pass a tarot deck to the person's left hand. I normally do this in a way that they don't realize it's happening i just hold it over the left hand and they tend to take it instinctively from their left hand the reason why i do this is i was taught that the left hand is more truthful than the right hand and will give a more honest reading than the right hand that is more skilled in in dexterity and a, an ability to um, shape things as it wishes uh, so the left hand is, is, is close to the heart as well. If that's anatomically true or not, let's, let's just ignore that. But um, being closer to the heart means that it's, it's more honest and more true to that person's being than being manipulated. So I still do it. Uh, I've done it for over 20 years. I will continue doing it. Um, you can adopt that if you want. Uh, it's one of those things that makes the reading feel special and different than if I was just handling a playing card deck. Um, 
I used to, when I was younger, get people just telling people just to take it with the left hand and to pass it back with the left hand. I've now got to a point where I can just hand it in a way that they will generally naturally pick it up with the left hand. Um, but asking them to pick it up from the left hand doesn't detract from a reading. It makes them think that there's something special about it and therefore invest more of their energy into that reading than they would do otherwise. So it's not a problem. The other weird quirk that I do that uh, may seem a little bit embarrassing and definitely not something to do, be doing in a pandemic is that I occasionally get um, a, a querent or a client to breathe into the deck or blow into the deck. So I will take a card deck and I will go like this and I will ask them to blow into the cards. Um, I do this for a couple of reasons. Sometimes I find it easier to feel the energy off of the cards than I do from the person. So I read, can then read the cards like with, with psychometry, the art of touching and reading through touch. Um, it keys me into their energy a little bit easier, the breath being kind of life force. Um, and therefore, as I'm reading the cards, I can put it into the context of the energy that I'm picking up on the cards. And if I get stuck, I just put my hand on the card and just pick up what it, it feels like. Uh, that is because I am a mystical style reader. Um, the other thing it does help with is if you get a client that is pretty shy or not very forthcoming, um, it can kind of help pick up on, on that person as, a, as an energy or a presence in the room. Um, it also brings that that kind of element of ritualization and that that magical element in, into reading so that the person that you're reading for knows that it's not just um, pieces of card it is a special moment it's a sacred moment i don't do that all the time um, i will sometimes read completely without that but occasionally i will get people to do that so i think that those are my two main embarrassing foibles in, in, in reading um, but that brings me to an important point that I will be picking up in other videos uh, that most tarot card readers build up their superstitions or their ritual, their reading rituals. Um, this is, like I said about the, the mindfulness, segmenting that time and that space as sacred and meaningful in a way that you don't tend to get in any other moment of life. Um, so whether that is lighting a candle at the start or what I do, making myself a cup of tea before I start reading. Any way that marks or, or signals that time and space as being special is something to invest in. So if that is uh, lighting a candle or lighting incense before readings, do it. It's, it's, it's teaching your subconscious mind that we are doing something out of the ordinary as well. Um, the, the kind of psychological conditioning of, of reading and it helps you put yourself into a mind space or a specific state of mind to be able to read in in a much more creative or psychic way whichever whether you are more psychological or whether you're more mystic um, so build that up uh, take bits from anyone else look at superstitions or folklores around what happens when things fall down or what happens when um, you shuffle a deck on who does what. All those that you like, start adopting and see whether they fit for your style of reading. With all that said, that is uh, basically everything I wanted to go over on, on shuffling and how to shuffle a tarot deck. So just to recap, um, pick a small size deck if you are too scared to, to shuffle or don't want to shuffle a very large deck. If you do have a large deck, it's not the end of the world. Shuffle it longhand on width ways or push it all over the table. We are shuffling to introduce a randomization element into the cards, but also in connecting. And we are connecting to the cards, the question, the querent, and the moment. And if you wish to adopt some foibles and some weirdness, feel free and start building up that, that special tarot ritual that become uniquely yours. So if you haven't already, please subscribe below, uh, like my channel, do what you need to. Please post comments uh, if you want any questions asked. I will try to kind of keep up to date with those. 
uh, and thank you so much for, for watching this.